Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at food chains, food webs, trophic levels, and then we'll finish with a summary. Normally when we have organisms living in the same area, there tends to be organisms which eat other organisms within this given habitat. For example, here we can see that plants tend to be eaten by herbivores, and so we have a group of organisms eating another group of organisms. One organism may eat plants, for example grass or tree leaves, and then itself might get eaten by another organism, which would be a carnivore. And this relationship of eating and being eaten establishes what we call a food chain. So a food chain is the sequence of feeding interactions between organisms in a given habitat. So it only refers to that habitat that they live in. For example, at the beginning we have grass, and the arrow going from grass to the rabbit shows that the rabbit can eat the grass. And then the rabbit may get eaten by a leopard, for example. And the leopard itself may be hunted by a lion. So what the food chain is showing is that things can be eaten and what the arrow is pointing to is where that food will end up going to. So the food chain can be comprised of several different types of organisms. The very first organism in the chain is the producer. The producer is an organism which makes its own food by photosynthesis, for example grass. So what producers do is that they make food, or glucose specifically, as their own source of food. So they use the sunlight to do this. They don't need to eat anything else, they just make their own food and grow and repair themselves with their own self-making mechanisms. The second organism, so the one that eats the producer, is the primary consumer. So this is an organism which eats plants or producers, and so we call it a herbivore, for example the rabbit. So here we have the grass, which is the producer, which has made its own food and stored its food as energy inside of its grass blades. We then have the rabbit, which comes along, and the rabbit cannot photosynthesize, and so it has to gain its food from eating other things. So the rabbit eats the grass, and we call it a herbivore. It's also known as the primary consumer. The third organism along the row is the secondary consumer. So we keep going along, primary, secondary, etc. And the secondary consumer is the organism which feeds on the primary consumer, for example, the wild cat or leopard. So the rabbit gets eaten by the cat, and so we call the cat a carnivore or the secondary consumer. The fourth organism would be the tertiary consumer. This is the organism that feeds on the secondary consumer, for example, lions. So we said how the lion you can eat the leopard. So this would be the tertiary consumer. And so you would go up from primary, secondary, tertiary, and so on and so forth. The very final organisms in a food chain tend to be the decomposers. These are the microorganisms which break down organism remains after they've gone. For example, fungi and bacteria. So you can keep having carnivores eating the previous layer. However, eventually the top species in the food chain will die and decomposers like the fungi and bacteria basically break down the dead organism, returning all of the nutrients to the ground. And eventually, of course, the plants that grow will use these nutrients from the soil, which are, of course, producers, and it all starts and goes around again. So we've talked about food chains, but normally in life, no group of organisms in a food chain are isolated as one feeding chain from everyone else, but they feed into a much larger food web with more interactions. So a food web is a system of independent and interlocking food chains in a given habitat or a larger ecosystem. So if we consider, for example, a forest, a forest has various species eating various different things, and one species doesn't always eat the same thing. So for example, the grass can be eaten by the rabbit or the grasshopper. The owl can eat snakes or blue jays. So you can see that it's not just one continuous line, it's actually a set of two different food chains. We have one food chain going along here, and if you count the second part to that, we have this one too. And of course, we have one going along here too. So it's several interacting food chains. And that's why we call this a food web. When an organism is part of a larger complex food web, a change for one component can affect the balance of the entire feeding system. 
So say for example there is a bout of dehydration in this woodland. The grass is going to suffer because of this dehydration. If the grass suffers, then the rabbit has nothing to eat, and so it may die, and the grasshopper doesn't either, so their levels may drop down too. If their levels drop down, the hawk and the blue jay don't have very much to feed on, so they end up suffering and dying too, and then of course the owl may be affected as there are less things to feed on. So one component can drastically change the effects throughout the whole food web or food chain. As we've seen, the feeding relationships are sequenced into food chains or food webs, where we have the energy of one going into the one that eats it. Each level or link in the food chain is what we call a trophic level. So a trophic level describes the position of an organism in a food chain or a food web, and it describes its feeding relationship with other organisms. So for example, if we consider this food chain from before, the grass being eaten by the rabbit, the rabbit being eaten by the cat, and the cat being eaten by the lion, then each separate level is a trophic level. So this is a trophic level, this is a trophic level, and every single stage in a food chain or web is one of these trophic levels. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.